Amid weak domestic consumption, COVID lockdowns, and the economic impact of the Ukraine war, China's Bureau of Statistics announced on April 18th that the country's GDP grew 4.8% in the first quarter from a year ago. This growth rate surprised many economists. It beat a 4.6% growth projection by the Wall Street Journal and a 4.2% projection by Bloomberg. In March, Beijing released similarly surprising economic data for January and February. Shen Jianguang, chief economist at e-commerce giant JD.com, and Ren Zeping, who is the former chief economist at Evergrande, wrote articles to question the official economic data. The Chinese Communist Party's census removed both pieces. Hello everyone, I'm Lei. Welcome to Lei's Real Talk. When it comes to China's economic data, several things cause people to doubt it. One, the numbers usually outperform the expectations of the outside world. Two, China's GDP always shows a steady growth regardless of the economic situation. For example, it was growing at above 5.5% before the pandemic and was still at 4.8% during the tumultuous past quarter. Three, China's unemployment rate remains constant no matter how much the economy worsens. It has not fluctuated far from 5% since 2018, and before that, the unemployment rate remained flat for decades. Data falsification is an inherent problem in a system where everything is about being politically correct. Economic data measures the country's economic conditions and evaluates the performance of the CCP's policies. Therefore, all data sends a political message. The political connotation of the data published by the Bureau of Statistics is far more important than its function of measuring economic reality. And the Bureau is not authorized to judge the success or failure of the regime. Its mission is to produce the data that meets the needs of the party's objectives. Therefore, it produces an unemployment rate that remains flat and a GDP that always grows. The Brookings Institution, an American think tank, estimated in a 2018 report that the Chinese GDP is overstated by 12%, which means that China's total GDP in 2018 was not the reported 19 trillion yuan, but 79 trillion. Because local governments and officials are rewarded for meeting GDP growth and investment targets, they have an incentive to inflate local statistics. For years, the sum of China's provincial GDP has consistently exceeded the national GDP, indicating that local numbers are exaggerated. In 2012, the sum of provincial GDP exceeded the national GDP by 5.76 trillion yuan, an overstatement of 11%. The discrepancy was cut in half to 2.75 trillion in 2016. Although the local and national GDP gap was reduced, it doesn't mean either number is more accurate. It only means that the difference between two overstated numbers is smaller. In fact, local government's data integrity problem is so bad that even the CCP's central government cannot stand it. The central authorities have been essentially fighting with local officials over the right to manipulate data. The central government expects the locals to supply clean data so that the central authorities can massage it according to their needs. Dong Da Shen, former deputy director of China's National Audit Office, talked about the local government's overstated data on March 4, 2015. He said that fake economic data got a little out of control in the previous years, and that if it was to be corrected, it would cause a precipitous decline. In January 2017, Governor Chen Tiu-fa admitted that Liaoning province, one of the heavy industrial provinces in the northeast of China, had overstated its GDP by 23% in 2016. And on January 3rd, 2018, the Inner Mongolian Party Committee publicly stated that its public revenue in 2016 had to be lowered by 26%. Subsequently, the Tianjin municipal government admitted problems with its financial data and decreased the 2016 GDP of its Binghai Special Economic Zone by 34%. Judging by this, the Brookings Institution's 12% figure may still be low. 
China's GDP may be overstated by somewhere between 12 and 25 percent. Tao Dong, Credit Suisse Managing Director and Chief Economist for Asia, said in an article on data falsification that when he first entered the field, he was told that China's GDP data was contaminated by officials at all levels and couldn't be trusted. Using this data in economic models would be like garbage in, garbage out. Comparatively, import and export data was more reliable because it involved transactions with foreign countries and falsification would be caught. But he said that trade numbers began to be manipulated as well around the year 2010. China's reported exports to the United States, which is the red line in this graph, have been consistently lower since 2010 than the imports from China reported by the United States, which is the blue line. For example, in July 2018, China said it exported 42 billion to the United States, and the United States reported importing 47 billion from China. China underreported by 13% or $5 billion. In July 2019, China said it exported 39 billion to the US, and the US reported importing 41 billion from China, a 6% or $2.5 billion difference. This data came from Brett Setzer. Why did the Chinese data show the smaller bilateral surplus with the United States than the US data showed? It's because showing a smaller U.S. trade deficit with China would help the CCP in its trade negotiations with the U.S. By doing this, the CCP was trying to make the trade deficit seem less of a problem. However, this trend reversed during the pandemic, and China reported higher exports to the U.S. In July 2020, China said it exported $44 billion to the U.S., while the U.S. reported importing only $41 billion from China. The highest discrepancy was in November 2020, when the U.S. declared $45 billion worth of imports from China, and China reported a record $52 billion in exports to the U.S. So why did the CCP go from underreporting exports to overstating them? Setzer said that overstating exports is a classic way of getting capital, into a country with capital controls. Economist Mark Jan noted in July 2021 that some observers suspected that China overstated its total exports to avoid controls on international transactions in a bid to bring more money into the country. This did bring China the intended benefits. According to OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, China was the leading foreign direct investment recipient worldwide in the first half of 2021, receiving $177 billion in six months. In December 2021, a newspaper affiliated with China's Commerce Department, the International Business Daily, celebrated the success in an article titled, U.S.-China Trade Volume Hits Record, U.S. Investment in China Soars. It said, since the outbreak of the Sino-U.S. trade war and the introduction of the concept of decoupling, U.S. companies have, however, been increasing their investments in China, forming an anomalous situation of co-politics, hot money. China is able to succeed because stakeholders in major financial institutions have accepted the regime's official fake data. Chen Xiaonong, a Chinese economist now living in the U.S., said that international financial organizations with close ties to Beijing, such as the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, and the World Trade Organization, have trusted the CCP's statistics in their work. I have a fan who asked me what China's real GDP is. I don't think anyone knows. It's impossible to know without a solid framework and a corruption-free and fraud-proof nationwide tracking mechanism. Western investment banks have developed their models to determine China's real economic growth, but they don't make their methods public. Chen Xiaonong doesn't believe that their methods are very reliable either. When Chinese Premier Li Keqiang was the party secretary of Liaoning province from 2004 to 2007, he didn't trust the official statistics. He used a set of economic indicators that were less likely to be manipulated. 
To monitor the economic dynamics of his province, Li based his numbers on energy consumption, railroad freight volume, and bank loans. These indicators, known as the Keqiang Index, were once the subject of international and domestic press coverage. After Li became the premier, we stopped hearing about the Keqiang Index because that would be telling the world that he didn't trust his government's statistics. Li's announcement of 600 million Chinese having a monthly income of 1,000 yuan or less, that's a monthly income of $156 or less, is perhaps the most accurate economic data that we've heard so far. Here are two videos about the Chinese economy I've made. That's all for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.